Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly. And even now, while we are placed among things that are passing away, to hold fast to those that shall endure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our epistle lesson today is from Philippians chapter 1, verses 21 through 30. For to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. For if I'm to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, 
I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them there is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing, for he has graciously granted you the privilege of not only believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well, since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. Our psalm today is Psalm 145, verses 8 through 21. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all. His compassion is over all his creation. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord. And your faithful ones shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom. And tell of your power. To make known to all people your mighty deeds. And the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord upholds all who are falling, and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand. You satisfy the desire of every living thing. All the Lord's ways are just. All the Lord's doings are kind. The Lord is near to all who call, to all who call upon the Lord in truth. The Lord fulfills the desire of all the faithful, and hears their cry and saves them. All who love the Lord, the Lord preserves. All the wicked, the Lord destroys. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless God's holy name forever and ever. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, you also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. 
When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. The United Methodist Bishop Will Willimon has told the story about the friend in his Latin class who would ask to copy his homework at the beginning of the day. He'd say, I had a late date last night and didn't get to do it. As you've probably been told, he had always heard that if you cheat, you hurt no one but yourself. So if you copy someone else's homework, you're only setting yourself up for future failure and so on. With that understanding, the young Will Willimon would let his friend copy off his work from time to time and believed that the cheater would eventually get his due. But then came senior honors day when the whole school gathered to celebrate the best in the class. And when the prize was given for Latin, guess whose name was called? Not Willimon's, but his cheating friends. And so the last will be first. In Jesus' parable this morning, those who were hired first were a bit disturbed that they had to work all day to make their wage, but those who were hired last, only one hour before the whistle was blown, received the same amount. The first grumbled to their boss, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. They aren't complaining about what they themselves received. They agreed on their wages at the beginning of the day. Instead, they're complaining about what the others were paid. They resent their fellow workers. But what those who were hired first failed to realize was that they worked all day with the security of knowing they were earning a wage. They didn't have to stand in the marketplace all day, anxious to go home without earning a dime. The burden of the day and the scorching heat are much more unbearable when you don't know how you will feed your family or how you'll pay the rent. Today we live under the myth of scarcity, one that holds that there is little to go around and so we must scrape up as much as we can and hoard it for ourselves. That is, if we don't take what's ours, our neighbors will, and then we'll be left with nothing. The strong or the smart or the virtuous take what they can and the weak must learn to be strong or die. When others have what we think should be ours or what they don't deserve, we become envious and resentful. Our economy is rooted in the idea that the portion goes to the strong. But that's not the way that God created the world. Scarcity is a human invention that only serves to commodify God's good gifts. Creation is abundant and Diverse life can flourish and be shared apart from resentment, envy, and domination. The landowner, the kingdom of God in this parable, asks, Are you envious because I am good? Or more literally, is your eye evil because I am good? Why should God's generosity make us look at our neighbors with hostility? We must notice how strange the landowner in this story is. Today it is considered 
a virtue to hire as few people as possible to maximize their productivity and thus to maximize profit extracted from their labor. That is, you only hire as many people as you need, pay them as little as you can to make the most money in the most efficient way. But nowhere in this parable does Jesus say the man went out hiring people because he needed more laborers. Instead, he only mentions that the man saw them standing around in need of work. There is no way the hour of work he squeezed out of the last group was at all profitable for him. He didn't hire them because he needed them, but because they needed the work. Work is a gift, not because somebody started a company and created a job position, but because God has enabled us to find fulfillment and to flourish in the work we do. In the same way, and even more so, all of our spiritual labors are a gift. It is only due to God's goodness that we can be pious or merciful. As St. Paul writes in the epistle lesson, that we'll hear next week. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. We are called to work out our salvation with fear and trembling because it is not we who are really at work, but God at work in us, enabling us to do God's will. We might like to think that we are the ones in this parable who showed up for work early in the morning and thus deserve more of a reward from God than those who show up late in the day. I mean, consider what we did last week or on a typical Sunday morning. We got up earlier than we would have liked on a weekend, put on our Sunday best. For me, that was a Hawaiian shirt and went to church while our neighbors slept in or mowed their lawns or watched television. Surely that counts for something. But even if that's true, God's grace is God's own to give. And if someone gives their life to God with even just an hour left, God will accept her even as the first. Jesus said that, God makes God's sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. St. Paul said that God is kind to the ungrateful and the selfish. And we should be glad about that, for we are evil and unrighteous, ungrateful and selfish. But we are also, perhaps occasionally, good and righteous grateful and generous, but only by God's grace. We should rejoice that we and our neighbors don't get what we deserve. And this isn't just a parable about time, though I think it certainly involves time. It isn't just about people who repent on their deathbeds after a life of sin and receive the same reward as those who were good Christians their entire lives. But again, in the kingdom of God, this is true. We are all at different stages in life, and God continues to seek us out and save us, whether we're children or adults. It doesn't matter if you're 125 years old, God continues to offer grace upon grace. The other side to this parable is value. Analogous to Einstein's proof that matter is energy and vice versa, we believe that time is money. And so the workers in this parable divided themselves along the lines of how valuable they were to their boss. I worked for 12 hours, so I am twice as valuable as the guy who worked six hours and 12 times as valuable as the guy who worked for one hour. In the kingdom of God, time is good. It takes time and practice to develop good habits and become virtuous people. 
And the more time we have, the more opportunities we have to do good for others. But those very things, works of piety, works of mercy, are gifts from God, whether or not we always recognize them as such. Time itself is a gift from God. It doesn't increase our value in God's eyes. The point I'm driving at is this. We might like to think that some of us are more valuable to God than others, that God cares more for some people than for others, but we would be dead wrong. God loves all persons the same. No one is more valuable than anyone else. That might sound like a nice thing to say, but it's quite hard to believe this and even harder to put it into practice. But the fact that I'm not more valuable than you and we are no more valuable to God than Jews or Muslims or atheists or even Baptists doesn't make me or us any less valuable. That might be the truth in a financial economy where something that is just as valuable as anything else isn't that valuable at all but that's not how it works in God's economy of grace. You are infinitely loved and cherished by God. We are all infinitely loved and cherished by God. All of our neighbors are too. There is no scarcity when it comes to God's grace. This fact doesn't call for resentment or envy, but celebration. Amen. We will continue with the Nicene Creed. Let us confess our faith together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I'm so glad that we've kept in touch and that you've continued to keep us informed of all your needs and prayer requests. I hope that you will continue to do so. Prayer requests that you'd like to share with everyone can be posted in the comments on Facebook or they can be emailed to lincolncommunityumc at gmail.com. Private prayer requests that you'd like to share only with me, uh, you can call, text, or email me at any time. Now, let us pray for the church and for the world. O oh God, the creator and preserver of all, we pray for all people, and especially those in any kind of need through famine, war, or natural disaster. Make your ways known upon earth, your saving power among all peoples. Help us to lighten their burden and to seek justice and peace for all. Guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit that all who call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth, and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace, and in holiness of life. 
Strengthen your church in the service of Christ that we may be witnesses to your compassion. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, spirit, or relationship. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bless those who care for them. We commit to your mercy all who have died. Grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. We pray for ourselves and our ministries. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbors that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. We commend ourselves and all people to your unfailing love. Accept these prayers, we pray, in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now together let us pray as we have been taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for continuing to support our church and the ministries we share. Your gifts are essential to ensuring that our ministries continue now and into the future after we reopen fully. This week we are taking a special offering for Grace Children's Hospital in Haiti. If you are able, please give generously to this important cause in addition to your regular gift. You can donate electronically by visiting www.lincolncommunity-umc.org slash donate or by mailing a check to 9074 Whitaker Road, Ypsilanti, Michigan 48197. Let us with gladness present the offerings of our life and labor to the Lord. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.